Well, I, I, I think in part because uh, a, a lot of these folks are dedicated leftists who actually believe that somehow socialism is going to work better in America than every place else it's been tried. Uh, I think others see the writing on the wall and are trying to get as much legislation as they can through before uh, before the voters pass judgment on their uh, uh, tenure in the next election. Uh, but but this battle is far from over. Don't forget the uh, the reconciliation bill that was passed out last night by the House. Uh, now has to go to the Senate, and under the Senate's reconciliation bills, the measure cannot be taken up under reconciliation. It's a big brouhaha last night, with, and, and apparently the Senate parliamentarian has, has come to that opinion. Uh, so there's going to be a big fight over there. Uh, any changes in the reconciliation bill have got to be sent back to the House, so there'll be another fight there. Uh, on top of that, they've got a very serious constitutional problem, and that is that pesky Bill of Rights, Fifth Amendment Takings Clause. Government cannot take money from you or force you to spend spend money without due process of law. Uh, uh, so you've got a big constitutional challenge on the horizon. And, and finally, this is going to be the defining issue uh, in the November elections. It, it could uh, uh, well produce a new majority uh, uh, dedicated to rescinding this and substituting for it the, 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 the free market reforms uh, uh, that the Republicans have been pushing for some time, including uh, uh, tort reform, uh, including uh, uh, giving people the freedom to shop across state lines. I mean, Anthem could not have increased their rates 39 percent in California if Californians were free to shop across state lines. Exactly. Plants. Right. Congressman Tom McClintock, uh, as you say, this is far from over, and I hope we can stay in touch as, as uh, events move. Great. Well, I look forward to it, guys. And Thanks one one final question. Judy and I are going to take the kids to Washington, D.C. this summer, and uh, and I've never asked you for any favors, but I've, I've got one favor I would like. If, if I could hear one case on the Supreme Court, <laughs> can you get me into, say, uh, Clarence Thomas's spot? Because I'm very conservative, and he never asks any questions anyway. So <laughs> if you could pull a couple of strings, that'd be great. Well, well that, that would require a few more strings that I can pull. However, we can get you on the other side of the bench. Uh, in fact, anybody coming to Washington, D.C., uh, uh, give our office a call. Uh, there, there are arrangements we can make uh, you know, as far as special tours and the like. Ah, wonderful. All right, uh, Congressman, thank you very much. My pleasure. Again, it's good to, uh, all right, we'll be in touch. No, see, don't say that. Make me feel like I'm getting some sort of special insider deal, even if I'm not. Oh, yeah, Joe, we'll take care of you. No, anybody and then can. give me whatever anybody any constituent we get. Sure, we'll get you tickets then. <laughs> Doesn't he know anything about politics? What is the headline today? I guess it depends on how you look at the world. I guess. I was watching ABC News last night, the 530 newscast. Diane Sawyer. She talks about the historic passing of the health care reform bill. Then she had on a doctor, and they talked about all the various things that, you know, most people like. Polling shows most people like. Mm-hmm. They can't uh, they can't drop you because you got sick. They can't deny you because of pre-existing. Um, a variety of things. And then at the end of talking to the doctor about all this different stuff, they said, okay, well, thank you. And then they moved on to the Tiger Woods story without ever getting into the cost end of it. There are, right. there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chunk of society... That that is never an issue. It's just it's just irrelevant, I guess. Well, and they they leave out. See, those things are the bones they threw to those of us who already have health coverage, and they're good bones. I like a good bone now and again. Um, but what they leave out is we are also going to take take taxpayers' money to buy health insurance for millions and millions of people. They don't even mention the subsidized health insurance payments. Which is unbelievable to me. And so on MSNBC, the one person that has really been, I think, doing the greatest job of pointing out the cost of this thing is the socialist on that channel, Lawrence O'Donnell. He's a socialist. He says he is. Mm-hmm. He, call, he says, I'm a socialist. Yes. He says that out loud. Why are you engaging in name calling and scare tactics? No, no, he says that. He says he is a socialist. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he hated this thing because he believes the way to control costs is the, the single payer you know, government-controlled health care system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he hates this thing. And he said over and over, this is the largest tax increase in our nation's history, with second place being a distant second. Wow. That is the headline of this story. The largest tax increase in our country's history passed yesterday. According to a socialist. According to a socialist. Yeah. Nice. You know what bothers me about it? In addition, well, there <laughs> God, there's a list of things that bother me about it. If you want to weigh in, one eight six six three three one talk one eight six six three three one eight two five five. 
some of the uh, divorces from reality that went into the mathematics of the thing. Everybody is going to be required under pain of fining to get health insurance. Whether that is constitutional or not is uh, is a very uh, active and, and valid question that there are going to be battles over, which will follow. Surely, the they, point th- surely they think it is, or they wouldn't have. Yeah, probably. Although, again, once you get the bureaucracy established, it can change shape, or you can uh, eliminate this aspect of it back and forth. The important thing is to get the bureaucracy built and the program started so that people are now depending on Depending on it and dependent on it, so you know you'll have their votes forever. But it's no, uh, now another entitlement: you get health care in this country. That's right, health and, and health coverage in this country. Other period. taxpayers pay it for you, uh, up to eighty-eight thousand dollars for a family, which of course is not indexed for the cost of living in your individual state or county. So people in East Bumble, Tennessee, for whom eighty-eight thousand dollars gets them a five thousand square foot house on ten acres of land. I'm not exaggerating. Go there. Ask people. They get their health care bought by people in California who are doing pretty damned well living in San Francisco. But, uh, you know, certainly at $220,000 a year, they're not rolling around in money, you know. But you know that. We we live here. Anyway, um, so but the the, uh, forced buying of the health care and Steve Roberts on far left uh, radio station KGO this morning says, of course, there is a precedent for that. You know, we're required to to buy auto insurance, which is just does not stand up to even the barest analysis since driving a car is a privilege and you're operating a dangerous machine. Being alive is not a privilege. You've got to buy health insurance because you're alive. That's not a privilege. (laughs) Anyway. You got to buy health insurance or you get a fine up to $695, I think. Isn't that the number? I think so. So here I am, young, healthy Joe in my early 20s. I say, screw that. I'm not buying any damned health insurance for 100, 200 bucks a month, whatever it would be for a young, healthy lad like myself who's being subsidized by the successful people in society i.e. I'm taking their money. I say, absolutely not. Screw you. And then at the moment, I do bust my leg in four places. I pay the $695 fine. I'm instantly covered by the uh, government health care, and they take care of my leg. So I've had a free ride up until the moment I pay that, quote, fine. Why would I buy health insurance under those circumstances? So you can, if, if there, there are no pre-existing conditions, does that mean you cannot have health insurance, break your leg, and then yeah. go sign up for health insurance? Yeah, you can walk in with broken, well, probably not going to walk in, poor choice of words. You can drag, <laughs> you can hop in, you can drag your your broken leg behind you and say, yeah, I need insurance now, pay the fine. Of course, you've gone three and a half years not paying $200 a month, and now they're going to hit you with a fine for $695? Seriously now. Seriously. Am I in the final throes of syphilis or crack addiction over here? I can't do that math in my head and understand why that system will never work. People will not pay their fair share. God dang it. Well, I just get back to the very, without even all the details, just the basic overarching principle. That there is such a, a, a difference of vision on. Because I was watching, uh, reading a lot of the um, columns on the Huffington Post last night. And for people that think healthcare is a right, um, they've got tears in their eyes. And, and you, maybe you're one of them. I mean, this is, a, this is like the civil rights movement to you. Finally, all these people, millions of people without health care have health care. And then there are other people, I'm in this group, who don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, but even if you accept that premise, why are you subsidizing people who make $88,000 a year? I mean, it's pure and simple uh, socialism of an extreme sort. I mean, honest to God, these are people with $5,000, 5,000 square foot houses in rural America, some of the you know, uh, Midwestern states, the Plain states, stuff like that. Why are they getting my money? Why do I have to give them my money? That's in that's crazy. I mean, that's like some sort of pure 50th percentile socialism, where if you're making a dollar more than the person at that 50th percentile, you give that dollar to the person at the 49th percentile. It's like pure leveling communism. It's ridiculous. Well, we have all kinds of socialism. Yeah, I know and it, the, the the line just got moved further one direction, and uh, perhaps with the next election, the line will get moved 
Back the other direction. Yeah, because giant entitlement programs are always being eliminated or cut. Oh, that's right. It never happens. Well, so See, what are you that's do? the problem. Hang, what are you going to do? Are you going to hang yourself? or uh, Stockpile weapons. I told you what I'm going to do last night. You still think I'm joking. Move to Barbados? Move to Barbados. I don't know where Barbados is. It's out in the ocean somewhere. Well, I'm, not, I, I'm not entirely clear on which ocean. <laughs> I could have guessed that. I'm going to an island tax haven. Goodbye, suckers. Goodbye. Marshall's- Enjoy the hammer and its friend, the sickle.